Welcome to Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And now, here are your hosts, the Photoshop Guys. Hi everyone, welcome back to Photoshop User TV. We are brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals, those who bring you... Dun, dun, dun. Where's yours? You're supposed to do it at the I, same time. I thought we weren't really going to do Photoshop that. User Magazine right here. This is the latest issue. Make sure that you check it out. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm Corey Barker. I am one of the Photoshop guys. And joining me today is some very special guests. Not guests, but regular <laughs> co-hosts now. And she's back. I'm back. Of course, Jessica Maldonado. Am I saying it right? Maldonado. Maldonado has joined us once again. She's going to bring us some really cool stuff. If you haven't seen her in the last couple episodes, go back after this show and check out those episodes. She did some really cool stuff on those shows. Thank you. And of course, no, you're welcome. And of course, we have over in the Weather Center, yep, Pete it's Collins. Me. There he is. How's it going, guys? How Good are to you be doing? here. Yes. I got to wait and make sure my, yeah, there we go, right down here. Yeah. There's see, we got to make sure we, we talk long enough so that y'all can see that because we think you're actually going to go check that out while we're talking, but we know you aren't. But anyway, hey, how's it going? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so every time a lower third comes up, we're going to stop so you can go check out whatever it is that shows up on that lower third. All right. So <laughs> no lower third came up, so I guess we're going we're gonna to press on. So um, before we get started, have a... Great little deal from PeachBit for you guys out there. We're doing check out. Um, it's a PeachBit Kelvy TV e deal. I see a finger above the monitor is doing this right here. No. <laughs> Limited time offer: forty percent off video in Photoshop by Colin Smith. You have, if you know uh, Colin Smith, he runs a Photoshop Cafe. He's a great Photoshop instructor. The ebook price is thirty five ninety nine. Kelvy TV price with forty percent off is twenty one fifty nine. And use a coupon coupon code. Kelby TV, and that offer ends on May 31st. So check that out at peachpit.com. All right, so what else is going on? How was your Memorial Day weekend? Ah, uh, busy. Busy? Yeah, trying my hand at a little DIY tile work in the family room, so... Ah. <laughs> you see, this is why you hire... Actually, at this very moment, we've got people at my house building some stuff in my garage right now. So I'm not there. I'm just going to check in later and see how it's going. So I'm not into the whole do-it-yourself thing. I like to think I'm handy, but, you know, it wasn't as easy as it looks on uh, HGTV and I will DIY just sketch it out that. in Photoshop and then hand it to somebody Yeah, else. I actually laid out the this. pattern in Illustrator. So, oh, you did? Yeah. See? There's many uses for many tools. That's right. All right. Enough of that. Let's get right to it. So I'm going to go ahead and, Pete, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead. And, you go ahead. Yeah. Speaking of tools. Yes. Speaking of tools, <laughs> I have mine right here. This is the only power uh, tool I am good at. <laughs> Drills, power saws. No, I can't do it. I could draw one of those with this. There you go. So You rock that, this power tool. It, does so. that make the pen mightier? The anyway, pen is mightier. So, mightier than the mightier tile than saw? The, Yes, because a saw can't draw a pen. Never mind, we're going too deep now. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to have here is actually, I got a little preview of something. Um, I got a new course coming up on the NAP site. You know, we've got full length courses now, of course. Of course, we have courses. A horse is a <laughs> course. Of Stay course. on course, because we have courses on course. Now, we have full length classes over on the NAP site. We've got a whole bunch of in depth series on really on the beginning stuff of Photoshop. Now we're moving into creativity stuff, and I have a type effects course that's going to be up very soon. And I just wanted to show you a little thing Love that effect. I've got um, working with types, uh, type inside Photoshop. And that's actually something really interesting with smart objects. So I have this word here. It's just a simple word, break, because we're going to break it apart. Now, the effect I'm going for here is something where you've seen it in movies and perhaps television, where they have this title and it's split. It's like it's got a slit down it. It's slightly offset, like yep. it's been you know sliced in half and it's slightly offset. That's an easy to effect to achieve in Photoshop. The problem is it's hard to do and keep the text editable. Mm -hmm. so you pretty much have to rasterize the text and then cut it apart and then move it. And, that's, and like I said, that's simple enough. But what if you wanted to keep that text editable? Well, here's a cool trick. First, let's, let's actually change the color of my background there because black is boring right now. Mm -hmm. So let's go with kind of a bright green. There we go. And let's add a little color to it. So I'm going to put a new layer on here and... Um, a simple gradient. This isn't actually the tutorial, it's just me setting it. There we go. Just a little gradient in the background there. So now the text. So what the key is, is to use smart objects in a very um, interesting way. 
I have this text layer. Notice it's uh, editable text, so I can double click it and highlight it and change it whatever, whatever I wanted to. But before I do anything to it, I am simply going to convert it to a smart object. So I just right click on the object and choose convert to smart object. There it is. And let's go and grab, let's say, the lasso tool. And I'm going to grab the, I'm just going to hold on the option key and just draw a diagonal line through that text element. And then just close out the shape there at the bottom. Okay? So now I'm just going to add a layer mask, or, or turn that selection into a layer mask, rather. I'm just going to hold down the Option key and click on the layer mask icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. And it hides that lower area of the text. So now I'm going to make a duplicate of that Smart Object layer. Just press Command or Control J. And then over here in the layers, notice here we've got the layer mask. I'm going to highlight the layer mask on this duplicate layer and then press Command-I, or you can simply go to Image Adjustments and choose Invert. And this gives you the illusion that the text is now whole again. But it's really broken up into two layers. So now I'm going to take that layer, that duplicate layer, and just slightly offset it here and nudge it down. So it looks like that has got a break in it. But let's say you're doing this for a design or a client or something like that, and you go to them and they say, oh, look, the effect is great, but we want it to say Split instead of break. It's like, oh, really? So all you have to do is double click and go inside that smart object layer and just grab your text tool, highlight the text, and we'll change it to split. And since the two smart objects are linked, when I close this and save the changes, the effect is maintained and we are able to edit the text Sweet. very quickly and easily. Now, to finish it off, I'm going to select both of those smart object layers and, and now contain those in their own smart object. So we're now we're nesting smart objects. And then just change the blend mode to something like overlay so it has this kind of cool blend to the background. And there you have simple split text, yet still editable all the way to the end. Isn't that cool? That's nice. Very handy. Isn't that nice? I really wish you had uh, changed the text to banana, though. Banana? Yeah. Well, I'll do that while you, while you do your tutorial. Speaking of your tutorial, <laughs> Pete. Hey. You're over there with your big. Cool big honk and Cintiq, yes. Big honk and Cintiq. Yep. Yeah. You're loving that thing, aren't you? I love it. I love this. I love the uh, 13. I'm getting to play with this one and the 13. And this one is so good. Uh, I've had people ask, mm -hmm. if I had to choose between this and the 13 HD, which would I go with? It really depends on your workflow, where you're going to be. If I was going to be at a desk all the time, it'd be this. If sure. I was traveling a lot, it'd definitely be the 13 HD. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Best case scenario, 24 HD in the office, 22 at home, and a 13 for travel. So walk them if you're listening. I I'm willing to, <laughs> to do whatever it takes to get those. But uh, anyway, saying. all right, so a couple quick things. First of all, reminder, if you are a NAP member, I've got up another Photoshop fun contest that just started, and you're going to have a week to do that. It's a great way to practice with your compositing skills and just being able to do stuff and think outside of the box. Sometimes, as creatives, we need little things to do that don't have the pressure of a deadline or whatever at work to really be able to hone some of our craft. So on this one, I've given you four images to play with, and you can do anything you want with it. As I say in the beginning, just make sure that if you put any more images or whatever, you have the right to use those images. Don't steal other people's images and use them if you don't have the rights to them. But anyway, you can do whatever you want. At the end of the week, I will judge the winners. And uh, it's just a great thing to play with. That's just kind of an aside. Let's jump over to the actual. Do they win anything beyond bragging rights? Or is it just the winner? Uh, since I've been doing, I'm doing it about every two weeks. So mm -hmm. we'll have a week long contest and then I'll judge. Yeah. And then we'll do another one. The winner gets an added month of NAP membership added oh, on. Nice. Uh, okay. It was more than that. I was doing like five people, but it got ridiculous because all of a sudden we're paying people to, <laughs> to come play over there. So, so now if you win, the top winner gets an extra month of NAP membership added to their, to awesome. their membership. Cool. And the nice thing is, is you can win over and over again. So if you're really good, you may never have to pay for NAP again. <laughs> All right, so let's start with this. I was going to do a thing on retouching eyeballs, and so I thought I'd give you a lovely eyeball to look at. So, yes. Ah! We can see you. <laughs> yes. Actually, I'm not going to make you stare at that eyeball because it's just a little creepy. So we don't not... have to stare at it. It's staring at us. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm going to come over here. A lot of times when you're having to retouch items, the eyes really make a big difference. And one of the finishing touches that I like to do with eyes is to pay attention to and maybe even add some specular highlights. I have taken this actually 
Uh, the original eye that I had was like this, but I went ahead and came in and cleaned up. And that looked a little dead, so I brought in just a little bit, if you look at this layer, a little bit of that specular highlight from the, from the light up there is back in, but just to give it a little depth to it. Now what I want to do is I want to talk to you about how you can add a little punch and your own specular highlights to the eyeballs. So first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a new layer. And we've got a couple ways of doing this. First thing I might want to do is just come in here, get my elliptical marquee tool, go right in the middle. And if you're not sure about this, when you start to drag out, just simply hold your Alt or Option button and it'll drag from the middle. Since the iris should be circular, I hold Shift to make sure it constrains to a perfectly circular circle, if that's such a thing. And now I'm off just a little bit, so I just hit my shift bar while I'm dragging out, and now I can move it. And my goal is to line up pretty much with the iris and circle the iris in here. So now I just simply fill it with white. I can do that by hitting, I always do it backwards. Option, delete, alt, delete. Uh, we'll fill it with a foreground color. And now before I even deselect, you see it's got the marching ants on there, I'm just going to drag this selection up just slightly and now I'm going to hit delete. And what's that done is it's created a nice crescent about the shape of the iris. Now if I go over to my move tool, I pull it up, and I'm going to hit my free transform of command T, control T, and I'm just going to squeeze it in just slightly. Now the big change is going to be to come over here and I can either do overlay, which is a little harsh, or I prefer soft light, and I'm going to bring it down. It's looking a little harsh, so what you want to do is come in with filter, Blur, give it a little Gaussian blur. So what it does, it softens up the edges. Okay, now it doesn't look that dramatic right now. I've got my opacity at about 56%. But if you look at the eyeball when I turn it on and off, it's just starting to give it some more life to it. And the key when you're retouching, especially working with the eyes, you want it to be subtle but bring out some of the drama. So if I kept it way up here, it would look a little cheesy. It might look good from a web page from far away, but not when you get up close. So drop the opacity down. Now that seemed a little bit clunky. What I actually prefer to do to keep it softer is I just get a soft brush. I can use my control and my option key and I can increase or decrease the size of that brush just by dragging across. Once again, I'm holding my control and my alt button. Now I can go up and right and left to make it bigger or smaller. And then I go up and down to make it harder or softer. I want a nice soft brush. I want it nice and small. And now that same type of deal, I just come in and I paint a little crescent right in there. Now the thing that a lot of people forget is that the eyelid and the eyelashes are going to interact with that specular highlight. So whenever, especially if I'm working on a model and they maybe have a little squint to them, you're going to want to come in and put a mask on there and just trace the contour of that bottom eyelid so it acts like it's blocking some of that light. That's going to help give, sell a little bit more of that realism right there, especially if that eyelid was really cutting part of the eyeball up in the iris. That's going to sell it. Now I just simply drop the soft light, bring that over, and it gives it a little, nice little kicker right there at the bottom of the eye. Now the next thing I would do if I was going to play with this even more is I would create maybe a specular highlight up top. I love to make just four squares in white that looks like a window. Then I'll take it and do a little warp and slap it right on top and drop the opacity and blur it. And now it looks like the person is looking here with a reflection of a window right over there on the side. Mm. So the whole thing is when you're working on retouching with the face, a lot of times it's those subtle little changes that are going to make a big difference. Most of the time you'll see people doing that and they'll get the idea of, oh, I want to get a little kicker there, but they'll do too much. Mm. It's really better to be a little more simple and a little more subdued than to go way overboard and all of a sudden your eyes are glowing and all this stuff is going on. You can tell it's been retouched. So that's just two ways that you can get in there and do a quick little kicker on the eye and it's really going to give it an extra little pop. Now, yep. Obviously you're working on one eye there. Would you, if you had both eyes to work on, would you do them each individually or at the uh, same time? Or? Uh, what I'd normally do, that's a good question. What I'd normally do is I'd do one eye. If I was going to do the crescent one, I'd do one and then just make a copy and drag it over. Mm. Or with the specular highlights, the same thing. If I'm doing it with a brush, I'm just going to come in boom, boom. Because then oftentimes one eye may be a little bit different. Well, that's just it. And yeah. so then I'm going to do a little bit different. 
and then hit it with that mask to, to clean it up. Nice. If I was going to do that window highlight, oftentimes you got to pay attention to the curvature of the eye. So mm -hmm. you really need to make sure that when you warp the shape of that little specular highlight, that it follows what should be the curvature of that eye as well. So one might be slightly different than the other. Those are just little touches that can make a big difference. So to answer that question, will I ever use physics in my life? <laughs> yes. Yes. There you have it. All right. Let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Jessica's got something cool on her screen. I can't wait to see what glittery goodness she's got coming up. So, all right, guys, stay with us. We'll be right back. Everyone, we are back. We are we, we're, we're like discussing like who do we talk about? It's like you just saw a really cool ad from Wacom, of course. You know, I'm, I'm going to talk about them for a little bit, and then we'll talk about something else. But tablets, we're all about Wacom here. You saw Pete work on his Cintiq a while ago, of course. You know, you might be wondering what do we, what do we have up here? Well, I am of course using the Intuos Five Small. Wait a minute. Hold that. Hold that tablet just right so they can see where you have worn down. Look yeah. at that work <laughs> on that, that tablet right I, there. I have not used this much at all. <laughs> It's almost wow. worn down to nothing. This is the Intuos 5 Small. I love this thing. It's great. It's easy to travel with, easy to move around. It does uh, come with the wireless module, which I never actually use because I'm always with my computer anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'm never really needing the wireless. But I love this device, and it's a really, really... Now, you know when I use the wireless is I use it as a cheap movie-watching uh, controller. Mm -hmm. If I've set up my, my thing and I want to sit back with wireless and I do some stuff with it. But that's just a, a random thing. We and love you have over there. She's got a bamboo. This is a bamboo that yes. I reviewed for Photoshop User Magazine a while back. Oh, nice. And this is my, like, travel tablet. And the bamboos, you know, are awesome. They're actually, when people come to me and they say, you know, I, I've never used a tablet before and I really want to try it, you know, but I, I don't really want to spend the whole lot of money. I'm like, well, get a bamboo. Yeah, it's like yeah. 100 bucks. They, nice they range from like 80 win. bucks to 200 bucks for the bamboo models. And they're great to start out with. If you're brand new to it, you're not sure, give it a try. It actually has all the features. In fact, it's got some features that the other ones don't mm. in many well, ways. Yeah, this has a lot of them have some great software bundles with them as well. Great software bundles with them as well. Make sure you check them out at Wacom.com. So are we talking about any other sponsor? Hey, MPix. How right. about them MPix? How about those MPix people? <laughs> of course, another sponsor for us is MPix. Um, now, MPix is... They do practically anything. Books, uh, photo books, but printing. We get so much stuff printed through yeah. MPix. We love MPix. If you haven't checked them out, make sure you check the out The turnaround MPICs. is tremendous. I mean, if you send something, like if you send something today, I mean, you'll have it by like, what is today, Tuesday? They say if you send Thursday. it by 11 a.m., yeah. you'll have it by the next day. By the next day. And it's good, and the, the quality is awesome. amazing. You would not believe, be able to think they would be able to turn that stuff around. I've got a massive, like, 35 panel mural in my house. It's like 35 little block images that MPix did, and they look fantastic. It's great stuff. So make sure you check them out, mpix.com. They've got, if you need stuff fast, they need to have something that runs it fast. <laughs> you know? You need stuff quick. It's a blast. Check out mpix. <laughs> Jessica. So how hey, are you? What have you got for us? <laughs> I'm good. I'm going to show how easy it is to make some glitter in Photoshop. Glitter. 
And I, of course, love effects on type, so I'm going to show it applied to some type. What but type? You could apply it to any kind of shape that you wanted. It's basically we're making a pattern and then glitzing it up. So. Sweet. All right. Yeah. Make it so. Okay, I have a beautiful eye photo from nice eye stock photo. We're all about eye nice self it, must be, it must be eye day on Photoshop user TV. 30 lashes. <laughs> and I have my type set here, but what we're going to do is make a new layer and fill it with white. Option or alt delete. And we're going to go to filter, noise, add noise, not de speckle. You're de speckling. I'm glad I'm, I'm not the only one. I'm de speckling, but there's speckle nothing to de speckle. White. Add noise, and I'm going to use 200 for this, and the default here is uniform, but I've changed it to Gaussian, and I've made sure that monochromatic is checked, and depending on how much noise you use here, it's going to give a different effect. So mm -hmm. depending on how large the item is that you're adding glitter to, or um, what kind of effect you want to create, just play with some different values here. So now the noise size, is that going to be the glitter size? Um, yes and no, but oh. it, we're going to apply another filter to it, and it, Quiet, the yeah, filters need something sorry, to play off of, so um, <laughs> go again to filter and pixelate, and you could pretty much use any of these to make some glitter, but uh, for today's tutorial, I'm going to use mesotint, and I've chosen coarse dots, and each of these, again, will give you a different effect, and they'll... Just I'm thrilled she went in a filter menu that was neither blur or sharpen. Have yeah. you ever used mesotint, Corey? Yes, I do all the time. <laughs> no, I really do. I actually use it for, that, for, for several things. You know, This is why I always tell people, go in there and experiment and play around. Obviously, that's what Jessica here has done. Otherwise, she wouldn't have figured this out. Yeah, and I've, tr I've tried all of these different mm -hmm. uh, ways of distorting it. The only one that really doesn't work is, um, let's see. Don't say crack a lure. No, 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 no. Uh, Halftone didn't really work because it's too uniform. It doesn't look like glitter. In fact, she just reminded me of something I did a while back. I'm going to do it in the next show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so mesodent, did, did it go ahead and do it? There we go, course dots. So we're going to, again, select all of this, Command or Control A, and define the pattern. So edit, define pattern, and we'll just... Now you're defining Call the entire glitter. image as a pattern, correct? Yeah, the yeah. whole, or you could, I mean, it's. Well, that's my point, is you can you, select a you can piece select of it, a, or you can small select piece the of it, image. you can yeah, select the whole thing. thing. We could really just. really limited as what you can define. No, yeah, we right. could just, I mean, this is all just getting our, our texture that we want to right. create the glitter out of. So okay. even, even taking a small portion of this is fine. Mm -hmm. um, all right, we could even trash this now. Because what we're going to do is go into layer styles and. We're going to choose pattern overlay and go find our coarse dots that we made with the noise. And it doesn't look like glitter yet, but we'll just play with the size until it starts to give us that chunky texture. Chunky. And then go into color overlay. And I like to pick a color from the image. And we're going to go and set that down to color. Now, real quick, when you pick that from the image there, so let's, can you go back in that color picker? Oh, yeah, sorry. Just in case people. So, when you have that color picker open, you yeah. can just move your cursor in your image and sample once you, color. Once your cursor comes off of the dialog box, yeah. it turns into the eyedropper. So, mm. anywhere you run over, you're going to grab a color from the background. Mm. So we can go up and here into the And that's a good tip, the, especially when you're yellows. designing like that. Keep your color consistent. Use, use colors that are in the image. Yeah, and you don't have to stay with that. You can then, mm. you know, drag over to something that's a little more hot. Ah. Or go back and change it to the pink. And this is, of course, because it's a layer style. Because it's a layer style. You can always go back and change it. And we could throw a little drop shadow on there. And here's another thing when you go off of the dialog box, you can drag your shadow around, and that's going to change the direction of all of your mm -hmm. layer styles, because that changes the global light, unless you unclick the use global light box. So um, let's see. That's pretty much it for creating glitter. You can change the size of the chunks. It's glitzy and glam. You can actually move that pattern around, too. I also yeah, like the can, drop shadow. If, if you, you, yeah, you, if you actually, like yeah. where the, mm -hmm. this little white spot here, if I want that to be on the end, like a little, a little highlight, you can drag that there. Um, something else you could do is 
use a gradient overlay instead of the color overlay. Oh, yeah. And a pick up a, more than one it. color from your background. And uh, you can, again, do it on a heart. Mm -hmm. You could try using a brush to add a little glitter onto the eyelid. Um, you would, so there's certainly a lot. I mean, yeah. once you set up a layer style like that, and I always do this too, and I'm sure Pete, you play with layer styles as well. Once you have your effect in place, you can go in there and just play around with it. You know, and I'm always telling people, just move the sliders around. You know, don't yeah, necessarily it, pay what attention to what a, a layer style is called, but rather what it does. And I always say the same thing about filters too. You know, it's just everything's designed to do one thing, but that doesn't mean it can't do so many, so many other different things like hair. That's glittery. Yeah, we could see. Let's try it on the eyelid. We could. Oh, we're doing it on the eyes. Oh, she's going. Well, you see? It's, she's, it's too close in color. She's on a roll now. There we go. You could try just she's unstoppable. painting it on. And what I did was option drag that group of layer styles onto the other one. Don't want to drop shadow on that, though. It's hard to see because it's the same color. But and it, just another example another of what you another point because you've got the effect applied to the text, but you also can take that and drag it to another layer and apply it as an image effect. Yep. A lot of people don't think about layer styles as being image effects. There's a lot of phot photographic effects you can achieve just with layer styles. A lot of people think, oh, well, drop shadow is for text and beveling is for text and things like sure. that. Sure, and you, you, know? could, you could paint with your effects by making a layer and taking the uh, fill all the way down to zero and then, mm -hmm. and then painting... Um, yes, of on course. Your mask. Yeah, yeah. Go back on our screen and show you what I'm talking. Because always, I get this question often. Right up here on the layers panel, you see. Here, you, you can tell us what the difference is. Before there. you even put anything on here, mm -hmm. you can you can drag your layer styles onto there. But that, but that the, the fill and opacity. Yeah, the I mean, fill. That, you might, if you're new to here, Photoshop especially, on. and you see up here in this layers panel, you see layer or opacity and fill. You might look at both of those and go, well, what? Are, they both seem to do the same thing. But I'll show it on this type layer. Mm -hmm. Let's hide all the effects and. Fill right now is going to affect the white, the, the, the text, fill yeah. for the type. Mm -hmm. Opacity will also affect that. Mm -hmm. But if we put on the layer styles, fill is not affecting the layer styles. It's affecting the white of the type. We so can't fill, see it doing but anything. But now if you turn off the layer styles, Now if we turn see, off the layer styles, yep, you'll see the type is, is gone. gone. So fill only affects the original pixels of the layer. All your layer styles will stay intact. So if you have an effect where you want the layer style visible only, and not whatever, you know, almost think of it as a null object if you're familiar with you know, <laughs> video applications, and everybody is. Yeah. Of course. But you can make it as an invisible null object in a sense, and then apply the effect to it, and that way the effect is only visible. So that's the difference between fill and, and if you And if you want to reduce the opacity of your, of your layer styles, then you need the then you need to layer. use the master opacity there. So, so that is the difference between fill down. and opacity. Just in case you were wondering, ponder that for a minute while we take another quick break. We'll be right back. We've got a few giveaways, and we are going to wrap things up. So stay with us. We'll be right here. All right, everyone, we are back. Now, before we wrap things up, Pete actually wants to share one more quick thing regarding his eye uh, tutorial he talked about a minute ago. So what did you have there? Yeah, well, I talked about and I decided it would be easier to show you real quick uh, because we, we do want to leave you with knowledge and not confusion. So if we jump over to my screen real quick, I just simply... Who said that? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I simply took and made one rectangle, then copied it and made three more so it looks like a window. Now I'm just going to hit Command to Control T and, and size it up. But most people will think that far, but you just need to right click on it, come down here and warp it. And now I can grab and I can shape the window, the reflection, as if it's following the curvature of the eyeball. 
So that's where I kind of wanted to go with that. I hit OK. Now let's just make it a little bit smaller. I can bring it down in here and start to put it on the eyeball. But then I'd also probably want to blur it just a little. And if you blur too much, don't forget you can go up to Edit, Fade Gaussian Blur. If you haven't done anything else, it's like an undo on a slider. I want to give it some blur, but not super blur. And then drop the opacity down. And don't forget a little mask to be able to get rid of that part of the eye, eyelid right there. And so in just a moment, now we've got a beautiful specular highlight that looks like you're looking through a window. So that's kind of where I wanted to go real quick. Don't forget, warp it, throw the mask on there, and drop the opacity, and you're good. That that's all I got. He's awesome. What do you think? Was that cool? Very useful. Okay, so everybody's ready to go. So <laughs> Pete's got his, he's holding his keys in his other hand right now. So no. <laughs> Actually, no, we got a couple of books for you to give away this, uh, this week. First one is right here. We have Plug In with Nick. It is a photographer's guide to creating dynamic images with Nick software. We sold out of those at the Photoshop World bookstore. So. Yeah, sold out of them. Yes. Yep. Oh, sold very, out. very popular book. So, so very popular book. By John, I'm going <laughs> to butcher his name, I can tell right now. Bat, Batdorf? Batdorf. If I said it wrong, I apologize. But there you have it. Plug in with Nick. And we also have another book, the A Photojournalist Field Guide by Stacy Pearsall. This actually looks Phenomenal like a Phenomenal photographer. Cool, actually, very, very cool. The cover is amazing. I love that. Very cool stuff. So how do you get these How fine do you win books? those? How Corey? do you win these fine books? You're simply going to go to kelbytv.com slash contest. Go in here and make sure that you select the right show here in the menu. Enter your name, email, website, if you'd like. And also in our comments, tell us, you know, we picked the wrong winner at random, so there's really no criteria here. But if you want to, you know, to give us a suggestion on the show, something you'd like to see, anything like that, by all means, tell us. We'll ha be happy to try and make that happen. But go and uh, try it, and you'll get these fine books. And you get uh, Jessica's training for, one-on-one -on -one training for a weekend. <laughs> no. We'll need to She will fly that. anywhere and uh, teach you Photoshop for, for a whole weekend. I just made that up. Sorry. No, she's not. My kids might have a problem with that. They might, actually. They won't let me go for a whole weekend. All right, so you can come and hang out with her at her house. <laughs> and help tile. You can help and, me tile. And help them tile in their kitchen. That's if you the... can grout, you can come to my house. <laughs> How many times have I heard that statement? <laughs> so you can do it for real and do it in Photoshop. All right. So, all right. Uh, I think that wraps things up for this week. So uh, thank you, Jessica, once again. Will thank you be here you next week as well? I will be. Which in reality is like in five minutes. <laughs> Pete. Yep. Thank you. Pete yep, will be beer. doing the other eye in the next show. <laughs> it's so going to be completely different. It's, it's going to be weird. Wild two-part process. He's finished one eye, and we're going to do the other one in the next episode. All right, guys. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you guys next time, ever so shortly. Bye. Bye.